From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. A major Bahamian retailer says the biggest obstacle to its expansion is the lack of basic math and English skills among potential recruits as it aims to build a 200-strong workforce by June. Jason Watson, Automotive Industrial Distributors President, told the Tribune that many prospective hires are unable to function in our environment because they are scoring poorly on the simple entry test they are asked to complete. Acknowledging that AID is far from the only employer affected by these struggles, he added that finding the right staff to expand the company's workforce by up to 50 persons compared to pre-COVID-19 levels was critical to ensuring its $8.2 million investment in new stores delivers the targeted returns. Immigration Minister Ellsworth Johnson said yesterday his ministry has been working in conjunction with other government agencies to address illegal immigration and shantytown concerns in Abaco, vowing officials will clamp down on the problem, but in a humane manner. This comes after Works Minister Desmond Bannister and other government officials toured some parts of the Farm Road shantytown on Saturday. Officials have estimated that between 1,000 and 2,000 illegal structures have been built there since Hurricane Dorian hit the island in 2019. Speaking to reporters about the matter yesterday, Mr. Johnson said while the government is committed to cracking down on unregulated communities, it has to be done in a careful manner. Some progressive Liberal Party supporters in Golden Isles say MP Von Miller is so vulnerable in the constituency that he would lose the seat on the PLP's ticket in the general election, a challenge for party leaders who are leaning towards giving him the nomination. The four incumbents who ran on the PLP's ticket in 2017 have been guaranteed a nomination, but the Tribune understands some insiders hope this doesn't apply to Mr. Miller, who resigned from the FNM in December 2019 and joined the PLP last September. Mr. Miller conceded he hasn't been as visible a representative as he would have liked, noting yesterday that it is challenging representing a constituency that was the largest in the country by vote total in 2017. The United States Coast Guard rescued three Cubans who were stranded on an uninhabited Bahamian island for more than a month. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, the three people, two men and a woman, were not seriously injured. However, they were taken to a Florida hospital yesterday. A Coast Guard crew found them on Anguilla Key, an island near Kisal Bank. They reportedly survived on coconuts while stranded on that island. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, prosecutors in Donald Trump's impeachment trial said today they would prove that Trump was no innocent bystander, but the insider-in-chief of the deadly attack at the Capitol aimed at overturning his election loss to Joe Biden. Opening the first full day of arguments, the lead House prosecutor promised to lay out evidence that shows the president encouraged a rally crowd to head to the Capitol, then did nothing to stem the violence and and watched with glee as a mob stormed the iconic building. South Africa will start vaccinating frontline health workers next week with a shot that is still in testing, an unorthodox strategy announced today after officials abandoned plans to use another vaccine that a small study suggests is only minimally effective against the variant dominant in the country. South Africa's health minister said the state would switch to Johnson & Johnson vaccine and, at least for now, not use Oxford AstraZeneca's, which has been heralded as one of the most promising for the developing world because it's cheaper and does not require freezer storage like some other leading vaccines. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure will continue to dominate the weather pattern across the islands today, maintaining pleasant weather with unseasonably warm temperatures and breezy conditions. Beachgoers, especially in the central and southeast Bahamas, should remain vigilant due to the risk of rip currents along east coast beaches. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny and warm, but a bit breezy in the central and southeast Bahamas, with just a slight chance of a brief passing shower or two today. Mainly fair and warm tonight. Small craft operators in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise extreme caution. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots in the northwest Bahamas and 15 to 20 knots in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest Bahamas and 4 to 6 feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set at 5.59 and will rise to more morning at 647. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.